Sweet. So yeah, we're recording now. So uh, yeah, super excited to talk about 3D printing. I'm Drew, obviously, from NWA3D. So have you guys built your larger A31? Uh, yes, it has been constructed. Awesome. Yeah, so we're going to go in the details of 3D printing and kind of going through all of that. But before we jump in, does anybody have experience with 3D printers before? Does anybody 3D no. printing? No. No? We're all provinces. Awesome. Yeah, no, that's great. So we're going to dive in and we're going to use do both printers. So both the A5, which is the smaller one, and the A31, which is the big one, because they're really similar in a lot of awesome. the stuff that we'll go through. So, so I'm Drew, and who all is there with you today? So I have one, two, three, four, five, six, six, seven, about seven students because we did half and half with groups. And so I will let them quickly introduce themselves so you can like see some of their faces. Yeah, sure. I'm Landon. I'm Emily. I'm Hayden. I'm Jacob. <sighs> I'm Megan, the creepy person behind us in that one. <laughs> I'm Alexa. Alexa. So those are just a few of our East kiddos. Awesome. And I'm glad everybody's wearing masks too. That's awesome. Everybody's staying yeah. safe, which is good. So yeah, we're going to talk about 3D printing and it's three big steps. And I'm excited that everybody's going to be here to learn about this because the seven of you are going to teach all the other students how to do this. You can go back and watch this video and then you're going to be the experts. You're going to be showing everybody else. So there's three big steps. Number one, you create something on a computer. So okay. you use a computer to get your digital file. So the STL, that's the format that you need. So that's STL, st standard triangle language. That's what you need to get. So that's the file type that's your 3D file. So if you've used a program like Tinkercad, that's an awesome place to start. Has anybody heard of that one? We have not. We've been using a lot of SketchUp and we found how to export using the STL. Awesome, yeah. So with SketchUp, if you, you download the STL extension with SketchUp, is that oh, what you okay. Yeah. Well, so, we just know that when we export it as a 3D, that we could change it to STL. And so awesome. we just, someone did some research and found out. That's perfect. Yeah. So that's what you need. You need STL. And it's kind of difficult to use SketchUp for 3D printing because SketchUp is awesome for like big architectural stuff, as you guys know. Right. But really simple stuff, with, when you guys are making stuff, just make sure that the walls are thick enough. So you want to make the walls of your model at least a millimeter. So you know at the beginning when it asks you for your units inside of SketchUp and it's right. like your inches or whatever, if you want to scroll down to the bottom and click millimeters, that's what you want to design it. Because if you make something, it's in like feet and then you import it into step two and then you're going to have to shrink it down to be able to right. print it on your printer. Because that second step where you take your file and get it ready, that's called slicing. And that's the second step of 3D printing. So if you have a big model, you have to shrink it down so it'll fit either on the A5 or the A31. So it's, and when you shrink it down, that might shrink your, make your walls really tiny. So that's the gotcha. thing to keep in mind. So if you want to use uh, Tinkercad, that are, you already start with 3D shapes that you can move around and combine and put holes in and stuff. That's free too. And then a more advanced program too, that's even more advanced than SketchUp, it's called Fusion 360. So I'm t I teach courses and stuff on that, like through East. I'll be doing some more in the spring, too, that you can go okay. and check out if you guys want to learn some more about Fusion 360. Oh, most definitely. It's like drawing stuff out like SketchUp, but then and extruding it and making different things. And it's made to be a solid modeling program for these types of digital manufacturing, which is what these little robots, what they do, like a 3D printer. Or a CNC machine or a laser cutter or something like that, where SketchUp is perfect for making buildings and like architectural renderings and really beautiful stuff like that. So it's kind of okay. like... Same but different, if that kind of makes gotcha. sense. Everybody feel all right about that? Does that kind of make sense? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Cool. Okay. So, yeah, you got a question? No? Okay, cool. So, okay, okay. step two, no, it's fine. Yeah, so step two is that slicing step, and you're going to use a program called Cura. So, C U R A. And that was on your SD cards. And yes. if you download the most recent version, it works well for the A5, which is the small one, but it only has the normal profile for the A31, and it's a little bit weird. So that's something to kind of keep in mind. So if you okay. use the version 4.3, that's the one that we want to try to use. So have you guys installed that? We do have it installed. I'm trying to see which version that we have. Um, if it's open, you can click um, About. Or I think it's File About. Where is it? And I Help think it's currently about. frozen. Perfect timing. Never froze up before. So let's see. Of course. Yeah, it's because I'm here. So it decided to not work. <laughs> um, there we go. 
Great. So you can click help and then about, and you can find out what version it is. Let's see. Kind of tell you in the bottom. Okay, so it's asking us to um, add go a printer. this all over again. Yep, with adding a printer. Okay, cool. Well, then let me share my screen with you, and then I'll walk you through how to do that. So that, okay, that's okay. the step, you get your file ready for printing, and then step three is printing it. So okay. yeah, let's get it right now. That's awesome. We'll dive right in. So we don't really have time to go into step one. That and you guys sound like you're already doing stuff in SketchUp. So I think you'll be rocking that out. So um, okay. we're going right into step two. All righty, so we got Cura right here. So this probably went full screen on yours. So you can press the escape key and then that'll shrink it down. Okay. And you can kind of move the screen around and then you'll be able to use it. So this is our main build area, but you have to add your printer first. And that's what this is. So if you're already in Cura, you click right here and click add printer. And then it's probably gonna look somewhat like this. Yes. Does it look like that? Cool. Yeah. Okay. So we're gonna add a non-networked printer. Mm -hmm. And then we're going to scroll all the way down. So we're going to go all the way down here until we get to NWA 3D LLC right here. There we go. All right, we'll get in there. Yeah. If something's white, like sometimes this one, it gets a little white the first time I open it. If you open another one and then open that one, then it works. It's a weird bug. Okay, we got it pulled up. So you can choose whichever one you want. Let's go ahead and start. How about with the A5? So we can okay. do A5 first. So we'll click A5 and then click Add. And then now my screen uh, workspace is going to shrink because it's a smaller space for our A5. So we can see here is our A5. If you hold the right mouse button, you can move it around. Kind of similar to SketchUp a little bit, where you have that like 3D space and you're kind of moving around. You can zoom in and out. And then up here on the top, this is what printer that you have. And then over here is your quality settings. And then right here is open file. So let's get your SD card reader, which is this one right here. And then take the little micro SD card and make sure that it's inside of it. Okay, one second. And it can be either one of those, either one you want to use. This is how we transfer information from step two to step three. We're gonna take our file, we're gonna save it as a G code, that's what, it, what the robot reads, and then put it on our 3D printer. Does that make sense? Yes, sir. yes. Sir. Yeah, cool. We kind of move stuff around using the SD card. Hmm. Find it, get it plugged in. Give us a second. All right. Okay, that's fine. Take your time. Yes. All right, now we have it. Okay, sweet. So, yeah, you can go ahead and plug that in your computer because on there we already have some STL files. That's fine, yeah. So, when you get it in there, we're going to click open and then you're going to navigate to the SD card and then you're going to go to the STL files folder and then import one of those different things. So I can go to my STL files folder here. So I'm finding my Google Drive here, but it's going to be the same as yours. And then if I go to A5 and then STL files, I have my STL files right here. And then you can click on any of these that you want. So I'm going to click on the snap housing and then click open. And then now it loads and it turns yellow here in the middle of your workspace. So let me know when yours turns yellow. And then we know it's okay. there. Let's see. So you did that within Kira, you went to? Yes, open right here, this little folder. Okay, got you. We went the other way around. Kind of right underneath Kira. You can also just drag and drop stuff in there, like you would a picture or something. That'll work. Okay. Too. That's good to know. Kind of, however way you want to get it in there. Let's see. STL files, snap housing. So all of these files, they're as G code files in the test prints folder, but they're here in STLs, so we can kind of play around with them and kind of see how they work. So does it okay. look yellow inside of yours right now? Yes, sir. Cool. Okay. So when we click on this, then you have these 
over here, these options. So this top one is move. So I can click move here and I can move this and click and hold on these little arrows and move it kind of side to side. But if I move it outside of this cube, or it's not quite a cube, it's, it's maybe more of a, was that a rhombus? I don't remember what, it's, it's four sides inside of a box. Yes. A big rectangle. <laughs> um, I, uh, you guys, probably, what is that? Do you guys remember? I don't remember what it's called. Math, math question. A, a 3D square. <laughs> oh, a 3D square. <laughs> a 3D square, I don't know, rhombus, trapezoid, I'm not sure. Uh, but if you go outside of it, you can see the lines go through it. That means that it's outside of the build area of your printer. So you want to move it back to where it's yellow inside of it. Okay. And then the next thing that you can do is if you click on it and go over here, the scale feature here is underneath it and you can shrink it down. So if you don't want it to be 100%, like I talked about before, if you make something in SketchUp and you need to make it smaller so it can print, well then that's where you would scale it down. So you can maybe click 50% right here and then it'll be half the size. Or you can move it bigger and make it like this, but you want to be careful that you don't make it too big. And I can click reset right here if I ever want to go back. And you can even hold down the right mouse button and kind of rotate and see your view here. And then the next one that we're going to look at is rotate. And that's what we really want to do. We want to rotate to where there's the flat part of our model is on the bill plate because it's going to print layer by layer by layer by layer. So when it does that, we want to rotate it. So I'm going to move this way and you can see there's these different circles. Now, if I click and hold this circle, it turns it this direction. And if I move over here to the green circle here, then it turns it this way. But we want it to be flat. So I can see if I go this way, the blue circle turns this way. So you only have to turn one, either the red or the blue, to flatten your model out like this. And yours will probably snap down to the bill plate automatically. I have a different setting on mine. But if it doesn't, go over here to move and make sure that your Z on move is set to zero. So it's flat on your bill plate, just like mine. So go ahead and rotate yours until it's flat on your bill plate. And then do we don't do the green or the red? I think it's the green. The green one? Okay. Red one? Which one do y'all want to go with? Green. Green one? Green one? Let's see. Nope, it's the green one. Good job. All right. All right, there we go. Awesome. So then now we're going to click slice. So slice, that literally slices it like a cake into different layers. And it tells you how long it's going to take. Yes, relatively close to the amount of time. That yes, ma'am. Oh, yeah. What's up? Okay, sorry about that. Oh, no, it's fine. Okay, so yeah, it's, it's relatively close to this time. But sometimes it might be off by a little bit. But this is around how long it will take. And then you can name it over here. So this says NA5 and then snap housing. And if you want, you can even put your name next to it so you remember. So it's the name of the printer, the project, and your name. So I could even put like Mr. Drew right here. Okay. So now I know it's gonna be on there. And then I can click save to removable drive right here. And then that saves it automatically to my SD card. Then you click eject, and then we can print that on our printer. But first, we're gonna add the A31 to Cura and save that version on there too. Okay. Okay. So does everybody, anybody have questions about A5 or moving stuff around or kind of getting it all ready and click and slice? Does everybody feel all right about that? Yeah. Good to go. Okay, sweet. So let's go back up here then. And then we're gonna click on this and then we're gonna click add printer. Like I did at the very beginning. Mm -hmm. And then we're going to add the NW83A31 right there and leave it. Okay. And then add. Okay. And it might take it a second to load. That's okay. And then now you can see this is way bigger. And you still have your yellow model on here, but it's bigger. And um, now what you want to do is you want to make sure that you have your correct nozzle set. So your A31 has a bigger nozzle so it can print uh, carbon fiber and composite materials and things like that. It's a 0 0.6 steel nozzle. So you're gonna click on this and then click standard and then engineering 0 0.6 to make sure that okay. our nozzle is the correct one. Gotcha. And you'll have to do and this. And we need to do this every time? And then it will remember right here. Okay. There you go, sorry. And then engineering 0 0.6. Gotcha. On nozzle size. And then over here, 
This is the same on the A5. We have our quality settings that you can change. So in this is all the settings, but if you go recommended right here, see custom is all of them. Recommended, you can see you have layer height, infill, support, and adhesion. So layer height is how close together the layers are. So if I click slice right here for this printer, you can see it's gonna take about the same, an hour and 18 minutes. But if I move this to the highest quality and then click slice, what do you think that's gonna do? Get the time even longer? Exactly, yeah, look. So now it's three hours and 20 minutes. Hey, can, go, can, you show me, can you show us again how to get to that layer height? Because yeah, sure. it's, it's right here. It is on, on the right top tab. Yeah, when we click on that, it says not supported. And then the first thing that says is profiles and default. Okay, so that might mean that you have a newer version of Cura. So that's okay. It's just set on the normal on yours. So it's okay for okay. this. Um, on the A5, you'll see these different profiles. And you gotcha. can um, So what you'll want to do if you want to change the profiles is either um, the next version should have the correct version of Cura uh, or correct A31 version in it. But uh, you can go back to version 4.3 on your SD card too. And you can click that and that will have these different versions. Or you can click okay. them. And at the top, the very first thing is layer height. You can change that layer height. And you can change it to these different settings. So I could change this layer height to 0.28, which is the same thing as changing it to other settings. And you see if it does something strange, like it, if I try to type in too many numbers or something like that, it'll turn red if it's something that it can't do. Okay. So I could say 0.28 right here, and then that will change the layer height. And now it's a thicker layer height. So 0.28 is about the best that you can, that you can reliably get. And then we can click slice right here. And then now it's going to take an hour and eight minutes. So it went down. So, so it's not taking as long. So it takes 10 minutes faster if we print that a little bit thicker. And then on the A5 too, you can always click this right here if you change something and it will revert it. And I can go all the way over here. And this actually has a couple more settings that makes it faster. Okay. On this 0.28. So now it's 34 minutes. So if you just change the layer height, it doesn't change all the stuff. It only changes just the layer height. So if, yeah. for now, it might be good to just keep it on a normal quality on the, the A31 until the new version of Cura comes out. Okay. That's what I'd suggest. And then the infill is how much is filled inside of your model. And then support, that's where if it's printing out in the open or like across like at an angle, then support structure will automatically be built so it can lay on top of it because it can't just print in thin air. It has to print right. on top of support. So it'll make the support and then you'll pop the support off when it's done. So you can choose okay. to So I usually leave that checked. So now we can change the name of this and let's change it to A31 snap housing, Mr. Drew. So now we have one that's for the A31 and one that's for the A5 and then click save to removable drive. So now we can put it on either one of the printers that we want because you can't print if you slice it for one printer on another printer, it won't really work right. You have to make sure that you have the correct printer selected up here so you can switch back and forth between them. So if you want to do the A5, you click right here and then click on the A5. Okay. And then you switch back and forth. So what I would suggest to start is to have one computer for the A31 and another computer for the A5. So then okay. you don't have to worry about switching back and forth and all that kind of stuff. You just know that this one's for this and this one is for the other one. Okay. Do you guys have any more questions about Cura? I think we're getting there. I'm glad this is recorded because we'll definitely go back and watch this. I know, there's a lot of steps. Yeah, the big thing is you have to make sure that you slice it and then save it to your SD card. And then once okay. it's saved, as that as that G code file right there. And then you can click eject. And then you can put that on your printer. Okay. Does anybody have any more questions about Cura before we move on to printing? No, sir. No? Okay, awesome. All right, so let's check out the printers. So we have um, two different printers that we're going to use. So we can split into groups and you guys can work on them. But how much more time do you guys have in class? I want to make sure. We have until 2.09. 
Okay, so we, we might not have time to finish today, but I can at least okay. go over everything and then I can send you a video afterwards that can kind of cover everything. That'd, that'd be great. Okay, awesome. So I'm gonna go ahead and let me change my camera here. And well, of course it says no signal. Well, let's see, let's unplug and plug it back in. Can you see us still? I can, yeah, but it says no signal on mine. Let's see. There we go. All right. So now what we're going to do is on the A5, you, this is the small one, you probably already have the spool holder built. That is the, the thing that holds the filament, which is the color of material that you're going to use. It holds this right here. Do you guys have that built? Yeah. Okay. So let's go ahead. Can you bring that over? Where's the... Yeah. Can you bring that over? I don't have mine in here right now, but it's like a little stand that holds the filament. Let me grab Let's it. See. I'll see what it is. Okay. Is this go here? No, this goes to this. See. One sec. We're getting there. We are getting there. Okay. Here we go. That's yeah, okay. See. So the spool holder looks like this. It looks like this. And it holds the filament. So the filament sits on this, like that. Okay, that I do not think we have built. Okay, so we'll go through our parts and see if we have that. It should be in the bag. It's it's probably built. Normally they build it in the install. They build one. Okay. So, but it looks like you have filament sticking out of that. What's the filament connected to? Um. Here, Landon, can you scoot back? So this is the material. This is the filament that you use. Yes. So this is what. Oh, is that yeah, this is Stand like this. Um, do y'all see a stand connected at all? No, no. Wait, it's no. It's flat. Is it what? Yeah, it, maybe. Does it look like this? Is that what that is? Let yeah. me see. Yeah, I think so. it looks just like this. Uh, it, it's, well, it yeah, looks like it was not built then. No, that's not it. That's it's, not it. Okay. It's somewhere in y'all stuff. Okay. No fun. And if not, on the SD card, you can 3D print one. So you can totally 3D print one, and then it'd be okay. good, good to rock. But it's it's in there somewhere. It's in with the stuff that y'all have. So, okay. So um, what we want to do is you plug in the A5 to start, and to plug it in, it's right here on the side. Okay. So let's go ahead and get that plugged in. And then on the A31, it has a switch on the back that you flip. Okay. So can you flip on the back. Ready to turn the A31 on too. Yes, on the back. Okay. To make sure it's plugged in. So is it plugged? To make sure it's plugged in. Yeah, it's not. I'm plugged right here, Landon. Oh. Make sure that's plugged. Yeah. So know. what's the thing that connects to it? There's still something wrapped around. Yeah, you have this all set on the back. Okay. That's all the way. Okay. Okay. Y'all find it? Okay, there we go. So now we got the oh, whoa, that's on. Uh, the big oh, yeah. plugged up. Sweet. Okay. Oh. So we have our filament right here that sits uh -huh. on this stand right here. Okay, so let's, let's go. Grab me one of those filaments. Wait, is this the bigger? Grab one, and then I'll show you how to put it in here in a second. Right here. Okay. And then what we want to do is we want to check to make sure all the plugs and everything, it was all built correctly. So we're going to do uh -huh. that. So the first thing that we'll check is it moves around with X, Y, and Z. So we're going to check all those connections. So this is Y. So these two cords right here should say Y. Do they both say Y? In the back. Let's see. You said the two on the back? On the back, yeah. Yes, uh-huh. Awesome. And then this is the extruder. It should say E with the cord that's going into this silver and black motor right here that has the little gear on it that my filament's fed in. Okay, uh huh. Does that say E? Sweet. Right. And then these two, these are X. Both of these should say X on them. You guys are, this is X. Did it say X? Yes. Yeah, awesome. And then on the bottom, it says Z. That's on the very bottom. Let me get this. You say on the very bottom where? Right down here. 
say Z. Okay. Awesome. Yes. Yeah. And this little switch is right here. And then check and make sure that this little L bracket, these bolts are in the middle of the little slot. There's slots in there. Are these bolts in the middle? Does it look like it's in the middle? Yes, it looks like it's in the middle. So we might have to adjust this. This is like a big adjustment thing, but we'll see here in a second when we go to okay. count. So what we want to do now is load filament. So to load filament, you take the end of it and you clip it into a point with that, the little um, bag that you showed me earlier that had the cardboard in it that looks like this. Okay, so it can go to that. Bag. And you can clip into a point. You can use scissors if you want to. But use these to clip this into a point to make it easier to load. And if it's already in there, that's okay. You can leave it in there when it's off. That's totally fine. Um, we'll clip it into a point. Be careful. Oh, thank you. And then and then now, clip it to the point. You make sure you pull it through this hole here in the side mm -hmm. of the filament. When yes, you're sir. Using yes, sir. It, you pull it out. And then you feed it. That was, little, that was a little difficult to hear. You can you say that one more time? Sure. Yeah, so when you're not using it, you put it through these little holes here in the side so it doesn't get stuck. And it's okay, got gotcha. you. But like fishing line or thread and, and get stuck, or weed eater line. So what we want to do is we want to take this, and then you'll squeeze this lever, and then there's a little hole right here. So it goes through this hole, and then all the way through the blue tube until it won't go anymore. Okay. So right there. So want to take it through. Where's that hole? There we go. It, it might be kind of tricky to get it through right here, and then you'll push it all the way through the blue tube. You can push it kind of hard to get it in there, but it should feed all the way in, all the way to the end. Okay. It goes somewhere right here. All right, who wants to connect to it? Here I will. And what, where do I connect it to? It's okay. right, right here. Now, is there a certain direction that the filament needs to be rotating in? That's a good question. That's like toilet paper. It doesn't matter. <laughs> okay. Over or under, whatever you prefer. Okay, I don't know if it's Right. Yep, it's a little hole on the left hand side. You see it? Um, yep, right there. Oh, this? Yep, uh huh. Yeah. Okay. Let's, okay. All right, he, he's almost there. He's almost got it through the hole. Cool. There. Don't you? Feeds through here and then here, and then you'll push it all the way through the blue tube. So the trickiest part is getting yeah. it right here into there. So that's why you yeah. cut it nice right and make it easier to feed through. There. Here. Okay, here, let's pull this out. Let's make it easier. Let's yeah. pull this out some. Please. There we go. Maybe that'd be. Wait, these two are smashed together. What do you mean they're smashed together? We can't get it through. Yeah, that's what he was saying. That's the tricky part. Yeah, so you squeeze right here, and then you got to go through this part right here. Okay, so you said to squeeze where to get through that? Right here, this lever right here. Oh, it's, okay, that's what it is. You have to squeeze you it. Feed it right through that tube. There we go. Now is it feeding through there? Let's see. Are y'all having some progress? Yes. Just trying to get through this white thing. Let's see. Oh my gosh, it's so hard, it's so hard. And you said to keep going until we go all the way through the blue tube, correct? Until it stops. Yep, push it all, all the right. way through. Here, let me try. It keeps turning. Can you make it No, it keeps turning. Here, let me try. Let me all right, so they're doing the best to feed it through. It's okay, give me kind of tough, but we'll keep pushing all the way through until it stops. And you'll okay. know, it'll go about a foot in there. What do you think, did it go? Is this, are y'all getting him, making any progress getting it in there? It's, we can't find the little white thing in between okay, let me take a look at it. Oh, okay. Okay, no, we got it. 
It's tricky. Yeah, we are having some trouble getting this through. So uh, it might be curved a little bit. And if it is, you can it is. Yeah, sure that's the problem. A really, a really sharp point, like 45 degree angle. So when you okay. cut the filament, make sure you cut okay, it at a big see. angle like this. There, over there. So then you, it has a nice point to make it easier to fit through there. Because it might be curved, and that's what's getting stuck, because it's just running into it. One day we'll be further at this. One day we'll be I can't wait to do it. I'm going to make something. Did it go? No, we're still trying to get it in there. <laughs> So it can be kind of tricky. So, no, it's okay. So, make sure that at the end of it, it's not curved. So, if it's curved a lot, you might need to turn it a little and make sure you bend it straight. Or you can just cut it down a little bit farther, cut it at a nice point where it's straighter. And then when you feed it in, it will feed in straight. Because it has to go into this part right here and then into here and then all the way through the tube. So, it's kind of a weird spot to get through there. You might have to wiggle it and stuff like that to get it to go through. All right. It can be kind of tough. Get it? Um, oh, that's the stopping. Gotcha. Okay. Let's see. Nice, nice point. All right. Now let's try this again. <laughs> Round two. <laughs> Mm. Oh, I'm having so many issues. Oh, did you eat it? Mm. Is it going in there? Or is it getting kind of stuck? Still getting stuck. <sighs> Let us again. Yeah, so try to do it at like a really aggressive point so it can feed through there. Because like the, the steeper the angle of the point, the easier it'll be. Try it again. Does it look like it's getting stuck right here or when it all already goes through and it's in here where it's getting stuck? Yeah, we can't even get it through the, the white thing to so it's like this little hole right here, and then if you squeeze this a little bit, then you'll be able to feed it between the pulley and the gear. Right. Just a little bit. I'm going to change the angle. It's kind of tricky to get used to when you first start. I'll get this one day. I'm just going to get this first try one day. Don't expect something to I'm so sorry. I have so many issues getting this thing in. Yeah, you can kind of see like the little hole right here that it goes in. Right. And yeah, so we see the hole, we just can't get it. You might, if you squeeze it too much, sometimes that'll push it out of the way. So you might just have to squeeze it a little bit. Right. Kind of line it up. There we go. We finally got it in there. You got it. Awesome. That'll get easier. The more that you do it, that'll get easier. Okay, so now it is stopped. Sweet. Okay, so we'll take our SD card, and on our 831, that goes in the side right here with the gold contact up. I see, I see. Here, let me hand it to you. You'll take it out of the little USB. Uh -huh. On the A5, it goes right here in the front. Whoop, I just clicked it out. So you press it in there until it clicks, with, and this on the A5, it goes the gold down. So you take out that white USB and then put it right here. And okay, and so this is what is on the model, correct for us to actually make it? 
Yes, exactly. So that has your G code file that it will print. Wait, is this for the right. small one or the big it's one? For both of them, he just said this. For both. So yes. So we saw. put it in either one. So here's the thing. Once once you get it in there, then whoop, let me switch. There we go. Then you are ready to print, but we have to get it calibrated first, which means we have to level the build plate. So the nozzle is a consistent distance all the way around. So the layers will stick layer by layer by layer. And it looks like we're about out of time. So I can okay. see a video okay. uh -huh. that will walk you through all of that. And then if you guys want to watch that tomorrow and then let me know how it goes, or if you want to do okay. another training with me to follow up and do the second half, that's the toughest part is getting it calibrated. So I'm here if you guys want. So okay. if you want to watch the video and then try it out, or do you want to just schedule another training with me? So we can try to try it out, and then if we're still having issues, then we would love to schedule another training. Okay, let's do it then. Yeah, so I'll okay. send you this recording and then that video, and then that's okay. That's It's tough because you got to kind of figure out, as you tighten the, the bolts, it lowers and raises the bed in different points, and it's kind of tricky. Okay. It goes through it really clearly. So I'll send it to you, and then if you have any tr trouble at all, then reach out to me, and I'll make sure that you guys are ready. Awesome. We really do appreciate your help. Thank you. All right, Mr. Mr. Rallis and everybody else, great to meet you. Bye. Bye. Take care. Take care. See you guys. Have a good day. You too.